Hey guys, in this video I'd like to go over how to solve or use Pythagorean Theorem to help you solve 3D problems. Um, so as a reminder, Pythagorean Theorem is good for finding the missing side length of a right triangle. But here we've got a rectangular prism. And our job is to find the side length D. Alright, so what I find most helpful in these shapes is to draw a right triangle that we need to find. So what I'm going to do is take a draw a triangle in this shape here. So this side length that we need to find is side length D. And to me that looks kind of like a, a hypotenuse or the longest side length of this triangle right here. Now this wasn't given to us but we can create it because it, it's a right triangle because it's in a rectangular prism. And then we can draw this triangle outside of this shape somewhere over here. And we're just going to label all the sides to kind of help us solve. All right, so imagine we took that green triangle out of this 3D shape, and it's now here. Now we're going to take the, all the measurements that we know about this shape. Now it doesn't tell us this one right here, but we know that it's going to be 5 because the rectangular prism's height is going to be the same all the way around. So this height is 5. Now this diagonal length is letter D. We don't know what that is. And when we created this triangle, we created this other leg right here, which we also don't know what that value is. So we'll call that, uh, let's call that question mark, or let's call it question mark, that's fine. Question mark. Now in doing that, what we did is we created a triangle, but we don't know two of the side lengths. So currently we can't use Pythagorean theorem. And just as a reminder, Pythagorean theorem is a squared plus b squared equals c squared. So what we're gonna do is we are going to create a second triangle. And because when we created that first triangle, we actually created, in a way, a second one. Now, check this out. That leg that we drew diagonally across the bottom face of this rectangular prism, it actually creates the hypotenuse of another triangle right here, here, and here. And what we're gonna do is I'm gonna draw this one off to the side as well. I'm gonna keep it blue so that we can recognize what triangle we're talking about. And once I have it drawn, I'm gonna fill in all the side lengths that we know about this. Now we don't know question mark, but if we find question mark, that'll tell us the answer to the question mark above. We know the side length of this one is two, and the base of this is eight. Now we can still use Pythagorean theorem to figure out question mark in this case. So I'm gonna pick either of the two legs for A and B, so I'll put eight squared here, uh, 2 squared here, and we'll put question mark in as the longest side length. So 8 squared is 64 plus 4 is equal to question mark squared. So 68 is equal to question mark squared. If you want to find out what question mark is, we need to take the square root of both sides. So that'll leave us with the question mark is worth the square root of 68. So that means this piece right here is the square root of 68. Now I could go and use a calculator and approximate that, but I think you'll find out that it's actually easier to leave it like this. So what we found is that this side length is the square root of 68. Now I'm gonna replace this un un other unknown up here with, it's no longer question mark for us, we know what it is, it's the square root of 68. Now we had to cr solve this first triangle in order to unlock another side length of triangle number two. Now that we have two side lengths here, we can find out what side length D is. So I'm gonna go ahead and fill in these values. Let's call square root of 68 in here for A. So square root of 68 squared plus uh, five squared is equal to C squared. Actually, it's not C squared, it's D squared. We're trying to find out what that side length D is. Now, the square root of something squared is gonna be the base, it's gonna be 68. Now 25 squared, or five squared is 25, and this is equal to d squared. And we combine like terms, you end up getting, uh, let's see, 68 plus 25, 88, 93 equals d squared. And if I take the square root of both sides, I believe the answer to this, d is equal to, I'm really getting cramped here, but d is equal to 9.64, all right? Now this problem asks us to round our answer to the nearest tenth, so we are going to round this down. We're going to leave it as 9.6 units. 
Now, I have a second example here, but I just want to show you that the idea for some of these problems, that these is what, I took this one from Khan Academy, but these type of problems, you may need to use, solve Pythagorean theorem twice in order to get your, your goal. Um, now, just remember, Pythagorean theorem, you need at least two of the sides to find the missing third side. Sometimes you'll have to set up an extra triangle in order to find that. So let's see if we can uh, show a second example of this. Okay, here we have another 3D shape. Uh, I'm just going to write the formula down because I, I think it's uh, wise to always have it. You can kind of fill it in as you go. All right, so in this length, we have a what's called an isosceles triangle. It means that two of the side lengths are the same. So this side length is the same as this side length here. So Pythagorean theorem doesn't work on isosceles triangles, but what it does work on is right triangles. So if we take half of that isosceles triangle, this right here, this, and the base. So, but the base right now is currently four, but we're cutting it in half. So I'm gonna draw that new triangle off to the side like I did. I think it's a really good strategy is that if you draw the triangles off to the side, it kind of is less confusing when it's a part of the 3D shape because there's so many extra lines and it gets kind of like crowded in there. So if you can draw it off to the side, it makes it more clear. Now the base of this, it's half of four, so we know this is two. The side length that's here is the same as right here, so we're gonna call that S. And the height of this triangle is five. So this one's kind of nice because we already have two of the side lengths. We don't need to do a second triangle. We're just gonna set this up as uh, five squared plus two squared is equal to S squared. And this is 25 plus four. And if we combine like terms, we get uh, 29 is equal to S squared. Now we'll take the square root of both sides to get this because we are asked to round to the nearest tenth. Um, so when we do this, you get uh, S is equal to, now I know it's gonna be like five point something um, because it's in between the square root of 25 and the square root of si or 36, which would be six. So let's check this out. I need a calculator for this real quick. The square root of 29 is 5.38. So when rounding the nearest tenth, this would round up to 5.4. All right. Now I hope this video helps you out. The main strategies that I would take away from this or that I would try to implement if I were you is that take the right triangle that you need outside of this three-dimensional shape. It, it clears the picture up. You can see that you need just two sides to find the third side. In some cases, you might not know what this side is, in which case you would have to create another triangle to find X like we did in example one. So I hope this video helps. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments below.